Hello and welcome. Welcome to Chair Yoga. We have an hour together. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. Thank you so much for being here. Everything I offer you from now on is simply a suggestion. So you're listening to me a little bit at the time, but then you're determining whether that feels right in your body. If you need to adjust or adapt to anything, or if you prefer to take a rest and maybe wait for what's next, or finish up what felt really good maybe before. There is no wrong way of doing this. Often everybody thinks of yoga as um, a particular shape that we need to achieve in our body, and that is not the case. This is an exploration of how yoga works for you with your body, not against it. We tap in and check in with ourselves, noticing how we're doing today and getting a bigger awareness to how we're feeling, how our body's feeling, if there's any places we need to take extra care of. We take that information into our breath and we establish a breath. So if nothing else for the hour, we have our awareness to how we're doing and what we want from our practice today. And then we have this breath work, which we can reconnect to at any moment. This breath work will guide us into movement, and again, in your own way. So give yourself permission to take what it is you need from this class today. And it's a video, something doesn't feel right for you, you can pause it, you can do more of them, you can fast forward and go to a skip to a different um, section. So everything is within your power. Just because I say it doesn't mean it's right for you. So your chair, comfortable and stable, so there's no wobbles there. Making sure that you have a comfortable distance between your feet so you feel stable as well. Deciding for yourself if you like that support of the chair behind you. Um, if that's the case, then fantastic. If you want to sit away from that support, supporting your own spine at any point, you can do that too. And you can go backwards and forwards. There's not one right way to do this. And then a little intuitive movement into your body. Maybe roll the shoulders or the neck. Move through the spine a little, wiggle the hips a little, and this gives us an uh, understanding of kind of where we are in this moment. And then we'll settle down into a chosen seat for you. So this is not how we normally slump into a chair. We're bringing mindful awareness to how it is we're sitting. So let's start down at the feet. Feet connected down to the earth, whether you've got socks on or shoes on, it does not matter. Spreading the toes as nice and wide as you can. Even imagine spreading the toes. You're kind of trying to send your awareness, spreading the toes, and nothing's happening. That's okay. We're starting to build up that connection to the toes. You can even imagine doing it. Option to pick up the toes or pick up the balls of the feet even and spread the toes as wide as you can. Fan them out. And as we do that, we get this beautiful stretch and length across the width and lengthwise of the soles of our feet. Taking the balls of the feet down if they were lifted and drifting the toes down nice and soft so they're not working. And then option to close the eyes or soften the gaze or lower the gaze and take all of your awareness as best as you can down to the soles of your feet. We're awakening up the soles of our feet. Notice the pressure of your feet being supported. You might notice the areas that are not supported, maybe like the arch of the foot or between the toes. When you're ready, imagining both feet, bringing your attention to both of them, heels all the way through the balls of the feet, start to push down gently into the earth. About five or 10%, you're gonna feel the muscles of your legs aligned a little bit, you might even feel it through the core, you might even sit up a little taller. And then notice this, hold this tension, there's a light tension in the legs, and then allow that to ebb away, nice and gently. And then we give the legs and feet permission to relax. Mm -hmm. 
we know that when we tense and relax our body, we get so much more relaxed than we um, do if we just simply try and relax them. We're going to take our awareness to our seat now, and you might feel, depending on the kind of chair you're on, those two bony bits underneath you, if you wiggle side to side, that's the base of the pelvis. We're going to even that up as best as we can. Now, our bodies are all different, so it does not, we're not looking for perfect ever. And then consider your shoulders. If your shoulders are back of your hips, you're going to be sitting onto the back of your pelvis somewhat. If your shoulders are forward, you're going to feel a little more pressure at the top of your legs. So we want to balance the shoulders over the hips as best as it feels good in your body. That way, where our spine is um, holding us up rather than um, the muscles in the front or the back. So we give the muscles a little bit of a break when we stack the bones. Crown of the head is reaching up towards the sky as well. And then drop the chin in to lengthen the back of the neck. And you may even sit back with the base of your skull a little, as if you're kind of resting on an imaginary wall. Shoulders over hips, head over heart space, more or less. And again, we're all put together differently, so I'm not trying to force anything. Hands supported. Notice how this feels, and then take a big breath in when you're ready. Exhale it out and soften any tension and tightness. So we paid attention to the posture of the body, but then we've allowed ourselves this permission to give it our own tweak and what feels best for us. We're going to stay here, soften the gaze and close the eyes if you haven't already. And then go inwards and ask yourself the question, how am I doing in this moment? Allow anything to arise that wants to, not judging it, just simply watching what comes up. With a curiosity, without needing to unpack it. Take your awareness up to your thoughts. And notice, ask yourself the question, what's on my mind in this moment? And maybe there's a lot, maybe there's a little, maybe there's just one really prominent thing. No judgment, not unpacking it, no story, just being curious. Huh, interesting, that's what I'm thinking about. Expand that awareness into feelings and emotions. How am I feeling in this moment? Sometimes we can label things, and sometimes we can't. It does not matter. You may notice a sensation that feels connected to an emotion. You may notice that you feel it somewhere particular in your body. We don't need to figure out why we're just paying attention. And then dropping your awareness through your whole body, from the soles of your feet to your fingertips to the crown of your head, and notice how is my Maybe that there are sensations in your body that feel very familiar. Try and stay away from the whys. If my shoulder's hurting, the reason why it's going to get this. Let's stay away from that and just notice sensation. Any tightness and tension that you can release on a few breaths or with a little bit of movement, please go ahead. And then noticing if there are any places in your body you need to take extra care of as you're moving. And just make a note of that. And then we start to notice and pay attention to the breath moving the body. The inhale expanding, the exhale softening. Starting to breathe in and out through the nose if that's comfortable for you. And if it's not comfortable, then breathe in your easiest way. We all breathe differently. And sometimes breathing in and out through the nose just doesn't serve us because we feel a little stuffed up or for um, any other reason. Wherever that breathing is, connecting it to the body, that ebb and flow of the breath, starting to take a little deeper breath in, 
and a little longer breath out in your own time, your own rhythm. And you may notice as you start to deepen the length of the breath, you may notice that dance of the body as it moves with the breath. You may even notice the breath in a particular part of your body more than somewhere else. And it might not make sense. We know our breath comes in and out through our nose or mouth and comes down into the lungs. But you might feel it behind the shoulder blades or in your belly or in your shoulders. It does not matter. We're just paying attention. And then we start to steady the breath. So we inhale a little smoother up to the top of the breath and steady the breath all the way down to the exhale. And this is regulating the breath as best as we can. And again, don't worry about any areas that feel less than smooth. That is why we're doing this. So we want it smoother than we started a few moments ago. And with this longer, smoother breath, and we want it to get a little softer. So let go of any forcing, any straining. You don't ever want to straighten the breath. And that's the breath we'll keep coming back to. So get used to the rhythm, get used to the sensation. Notice where you feel your breath in your body. That longer, smoother, softer breath. And we'll root down through our feet and seat and we'll rise from there, lengthening through the upper body, rolling those shoulders back and down a couple of times to soften in through the shoulders and then broaden across the collarbones just a little, just to tuck the shoulder blades in toward each other softly. And at any time you can come back to this mindful posture, this regulating breath. And this will reduce the stress response, activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxation response. And um, if anything ever um, brings a little elevated heart rate or you're concerned about anything, then this breath is one of the best ways to regulate back to a place that we feel comfortable and at ease. So from here, with the very tip of your nose, let's start to create circles in front of you as if you're drawing circles in the air. Really slow, nice, and blend it with the breath. So the inhale, you lift up, the exhale, rounding down. And you can keep your eyes focused on the point in front of you or on the floor. You can keep your eyes closed depending on how this feels. Any other neck movements that feel better for you, go ahead. And you can allow those circles to get a little bigger if you wish. Mm -hmm. At the end of one of your next exhales, when it feels ready for you, we'll pause and take it around in the opposite direction. You're welcome to rest a little more. And this movement in through the neck is always slow, we're always paying attention to how it feels, adjusting it if it doesn't feel right for us, doing less repetitions, maybe just switching up the movement because this is not feeling right for you. Make your all small movements, imagined movements are also great. And at the end of one of your next exhales, let's pause with the chin down towards the chest, allow the head to get a little bit heavier, and then draw the shoulders back in space. Breathing into the back of the neck, top of the shoulders, upper back. You can lighten the head up as we draw the base of the skull up towards the ceiling. That's going to um, ease sensation in the back of the neck and upper shoulders, or you can allow that head to get a little heavier one is not better than the other, but we want to stay connected to that breath. And then when you feel ready, we'll draw the crown of the head upwards towards the ceiling once more. Dangling that right hand down, nice and easy through the shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers and thumbs. Blending with the breath, we inhale, round and up. 
exhaling round and down. So circular movements through the shoulder. Noticing how that feels, there might be some clicks and clacks in there. We don't have to go to the biggest range of motion, so ease the movement into your body. Allow that breath, that longer, smoother, steadier breath to guide the movement to be longer, smoother, and softer as well. When you're ready, let's pause and take that round in the opposite direction. You may experience this in different places in your body. Just be curious, no judgments, always tuning into yourself, noticing if this serves you, if you want to switch it up in any way. Trust yourself and what your body's telling you. The more we tap into that language of the body, then the more our intuition takes over and we start to work in harmony with what the body is telling us. Let's take that shoulder back to the new Control place. And then from here, let's take the arm up in a cactus or a T. Same arm, right arm, and mirroring here, of course. Fingertips on or towards that shoulder, or you can keep it up in a cactus there. Elbow down or towards shoulder height, and with the tip of the elbow, we're going to start to create circles in the air, very much like we did with our nose. Inhaling forward and exhaling down. Around. Going in whichever direction suits you. Maybe those circles get a little bigger. Keeping the heart facing forward or the torso squared forward, or starting to allow the shoulders to come forward and back in a natural way. So we get a little rotation there. You can take your gaze with you over that back shoulder, side to side, noticing how that feels for you. Let's take another two or three here, working with the length of that breath. And then at the end of the exhale, let's bring the torso back to square, keep it there, and take those circles around in the opposite direction. I'm going to take a few breaths worth of rest, please do. It does not have to be a big movement, be gentle with yourself. The option is to allow the shoulders naturally to start to come forward and back if you want to take those circles a little bigger. Keep connected to the breath here. Let's take another two or three. Stay in your own awareness. Steady, smooth breath. And then at the end of that exhale, let's turn that, those fingertips down, any intuitive movement to release. So I'm going to turn that palm out, bending from the elbow, inhaling fingers up, exhaling down, and now we're stretching into that elbow. Imagine pushing down as if through molasses. You can stay here, start to move from the shoulder, easy through the joints. Left hand can support you on the side of the leg of your chair, even the arm of your chair. Option to take those right fingertips up and over, but keep the right hip anchored to the chair. That way we get the length through the right side of the body. Crown of the head is reaching up, so we get length there, almost as if that string reaching us up to the crown of the head is being pulled over to the left if you're coming out of center there. Let's take another two here. Keep connected to that longer, smoother, softer breath. Bring that into your movement. And then the next time those fingertips come down, let's leave it there, taking that um, palm into a soft or tight fist, and then we'll circle through the wrist there. One direction, as if you're kind of churning through oatmeal. And then we'll pause and take that in the opposite direction. And notice not only the bits that are tight and a bit challenging, but notice the ease as well, because it is in there. And we start to balance out this awareness in our body. Let's release those fingertips. 
Normally, we only pay attention to our body when something goes wrong or it doesn't feel right. So trying to pay attention to the things that do feel easeful as well, balance out our awareness so we have um, more appreciation for it instead of this kind of gloomy outlook that we only notice it when something's wrong. Let's take that left arm down, give a little dangle, collarbones aboard, and we're lengthening up through the crown of the head and connecting to that breath. In your own time when you're ready, circling the shoulder, round and up, round and down. Inhale, brings the shoulder up, the exhale draws it down. Trying to draw circles with the head of the arm bone here in the air next to you. And it doesn't matter if the circle's not perfect, we're never looking for perfect. We're just trying our best in this moment to create that smooth movement blended with the breath. At the end of the next exhale, when you're ready, let's pause and take that round in the opposite direction. If the breath drifted off from your awareness, come back to it. Notice where you experience this in your body. Without needing to unpack it, just, huh, interesting, I feel it there. And then at the end of that exhale, we'll pause, rest, any movement you want, and then just as the other side, we'll take that arm up in a cactus, or fingertips arm towards the shoulder, your choice. Elbow down or up, does not matter. We start to draw circles with the very tip of the elbow in the air. Doesn't have to be big movements, but what we're looking for is smooth and controlled. Notice if you're rushing through a particular area. Option to keep that torso squared forward or to allow those shoulders to naturally come forward and back in your own way. Maybe that gaze even comes with that elbow or you keep it faced forward. Your choice. Keep that steady, smooth rhythm of breath moving through the body. At the end of the next exhale, let's pause, take the torso back to square, either rest for a few breaths or we go around in the opposite direction. And again, what we're looking for is steadiness and smoothness here, building that strength in the shoulder, the awareness, stabilizing that shoulder girdle as we move. Option to stay here or start to allow that rotation to come through the upper body, keeping the hips rooted to the chair, but the upper body, the shoulders coming forward and back, if that feels like a natural way to move for you. Connecting to that breath for another two or three. And then at the end of one of your next exhales, we'll allow that arm down, little movement to release tension, turning that left palm up, bending from the elbow, inhaling up, exhaling, pushing down as if through molasses. Connect the movement to the breath, and this is a great place to stay. If you've done enough with the shoulders, then stay in the elbow. The elbow can always do with movement here, or start to move from the shoulder. Doesn't have to be a big movement. Elbows, wrists, things, and thumbs, and that shoulder nice and easy. The right hand is there on the side of your chair, arm of your chair, or leg of your chair. If you wish to bring those left fingertips up and over, finding length through the crown of the head and through the neck. So we're finding that length as we anchor down the left hip to the chair. Let's take another three here. You can always rest, of course. Be gentle with yourself. And then after that last exhale, we'll come all the way back through center. And then take that hand in a soft or tight fist, bringing the elbow in towards the ribs, and then we circle through with the wrist. Notice how good that feels. Notice that you do have ease in that area. And you also have decisions. You can take it around to the opposite 
opposite direction. You can tighten the fist, you can ease the fist into a soft fist. You can do less or slower repetitions. And then when it feels right to you, give those fingertips a little wiggle and we're taking the hands back to support. Any intuitive movement you need to release tension, please go ahead. If you're sitting into the back of the chair, now may be a time that you shuffle forward, even if it's a few centimeters as we come down through the flexion and extension of the spine. So we're rooting to rise, mindful posture as we broaden the collarbones, and then connect to that breath, longer, smoother, softer breath. Check in with yourself, notice how you're doing, take care of your needs if there are, and then from here, we can start to bring it down through the spine. So let's start way up in the cervical spine. Inhaling, lifting the chin, but lengthen through the back of the neck, so it's not just compression there. On the exhale, tuck the chin down and in. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Great place to stay. If you want to add on, let's draw the shoulder blades back to Towards each other, you can drag the hands up towards the pelvis, up through the top of the legs. On the exhale, round through the shoulders as we tuck the chin down. So we're really getting that full range of motion through the shoulders. And you might feel some tightness and tension, but also notice the ease. Notice the places that it feels just fine for you. Bringing it down through the body. On the inhale, open up through the heart and flare those front ribs forward. Get an arch in the back. And on the exhale, draw the belly button in towards the spine and push the back of the ribs towards the back of the chair. So we're kind of scooping out the front body. Inhaling, we're expanding it. This is extension of the spine and exhaling flexion of the spine as we push back. You can take this down a little bit into the lower back. On the inhale, imagine sending that tailbone out behind you if you arch. On the exhale, tuck the tailbone, sit onto the back of the pelvis. So now we get a little bigger movement. If any of this doesn't feel right to you, then stay at a point where it feels comfortable and you can move with the breath, never holding the breath. If you want to take this down into the feet, on the inhale, imagine dragging your heels back towards the chair. On the exhale, push evenly into the feet left and right, and you might feel your legs lighten um, light up a little bit. Great place to be right here. Adding on from here. On the inhale, if you want to add the arms, let's spread those arms out wide, either hands low or high as if you've got big um, wing spans. And on the exhale, let's curl over and give ourselves a hug. Inhaling wide, and then opposite arm on top as we're hugging. Hands lightly come to the sides, and see if you can create as much flow in this movement, smoothness in the movement as possible. Take a break if those arms are getting heavy, or adjust them, maybe they want to come down a little further. And let's take another to either side. Working with your breath, you can always close your eyes, go inwards or soften the gaze down. Mm -hmm. Notice how this feels. And when you're ready after that last one, let's take those arms down. Give them a little wiggle. And let's come into a little more flexion, um, side flexion of the spine. So sitting back into an imaginary wall, base of the uh, back of the pelvis, shoulder blades and the base of the skull coming back. Steady the breath if the breath got elevated. This is the inhale and the exhale. Let's dip those right fingertips down. Keep that left hip anchored and find some length through the left side. Inhaling up to center, exhaling to the other side. Option to stay here. Option is the left fingertips come down, reach with the right hand up towards the ceiling, finding that length. Mm -hmm. 
and we're reaching those fingertips away from each other, so we're also getting that space across the collarbones. And maybe those hands even draw back in space a little, so we've got that diagonal tension going. Let's take two more either side, or the, with, the, with or without the arms here. And of course, we're getting into the core as we're coming out of balance and tipping to one side and then another, warming up that core, coming back through center. Any intuitive movement to release, please go ahead. We'll keep those hands down as we tap back into that breath if we disconnected from it. Rooting to rise. This is the inhale. On the exhale, we're going to slide the right shoulder and hand forward, the left back as we tip to or turn to the left. Inhaling back through center. Let's stay on the left side. Exhale, twisting. You that gaze even comes back behind you, behind that left shoulder as if something super fascinating is happening behind. Keep that breath steady and smooth. Great place to be right here. Option to twist and stay three breaths. If the hands are doing a lot of work here, hover the hands so we really are asking a lot of the torso, making sure that that right hip is not shimmying forward so the pelvis is heavy and connected down to the earth. Keep that breath going for one last exhale. And then on the inhale, we're coming all the way back through center. Big breath in. Exhale it out. <laughs> Reconnect to your breath length, and we're coming to the other side, so twisting to the right. Inhaling, lengthening, exhaling, left hand and shoulder forward, and coming back through center. So we're not forcing anything here, this is a gentle twist. Depending on what feels good to you, maybe bring that head in as you get into the neck, bringing the gaze to the right or over that right shoulder. Keep it nice and easy here. Option to stay. Option is in movement. Option to twist and stay three breaths with the left hip anchored back, pushing into that left foot to do so. If the hands are gripping, Hop of the hands so the torso is really holding you here, strengthening through the torso, giving you that range of motion from the twist. Keep the breath going, never holding the breath for the last exhale. And then when we're ready, we're coming all the way back through center. Big breath in, exhaling it out. Nicely done. And then from here, we're going to take those feet into an external rotation. So, you may want to sit back onto your chair if you feel like you're not stable enough, or you may want to sit forward on your chair if you want to, um, if you want to take more stability into the legs. Your choice. Above all else, when you wiggle, you don't feel worried that you're going to be slipping or sliding. So, we're nice and solid here. Rooting to rise. And steadying the breath in and out. Nicely done. And we're going to work with that breath a little. We're going to take the hands in front of the heart. And on the inhale, let's take the hands up through the center line of the body. On the exhale, as they come down through the heart, interlace the hands and push the hands down. Now keep those front ribs in. Elbows bent or towards straight, inhaling, sweep the arms up in front of you. Any height, again, elbows bent is going to ease the shoulders. Towards straight is going to be a little more challenging. And then turn the palms back down through the center line of the body. Interlace the hands the opposite way and turn the palms down. And this is what we're doing. Inhaling, forward and up. Exhaling, the palms come down. Interlace them as they come down through the heart. Mm -hmm. Pushing the palms away and connect to your breath length. Steady and smooth the breath and the movement is steady and smooth too. Let's take two more here. Mm -hmm. 
Next time we take those hands up, we're going to keep them there, elbows bent or towards straight, and shift over towards the right side, inhaling up through center and over to the left. And we're just gonna do that one more time, either side. Finding that length and getting that core activation as we come out of center. Flip the palms down and then release the palms down. Any intuitive movement, you need to release tension through the shoulders. Please go ahead. And then from here, we're going to use those lower ribs on the inhale. We're taking the ribs round and forward, whichever direction you want to go in. And we're arching the back on that inhale. On the exhale, round and back. We've got a little um, curve through the spine, a little rounding. So the inhale is that extension of the spine. And the exhale, the rounding of the spine. From here, it can be a big or small movement. It does not have to look like anybody else's body. Your body is unique and tune into what feels good for you. You can get the shoulders, the head, the neck involved if that feels good to you. Maybe the pelvis, maybe you're aware of how the feet are activated as well as you push into one foot as you come to the other side. You get to shift and move this in your own way. Keep the breath steady and smooth, and we're trying to create that smoothness of the movement as well. And then when you're ready, let's pause and take that round in the opposite direction. And this may feel a bit awkward for a few turns, and then we start to ease into it. Our body always likes to get used to something, never pushing the body and never holding the always keeping that breath fluid and smooth and melding that fluid and smoothness with the movement. As we do this, we get to know our bodies, get to know what feels good for it, allowing for that enjoyment. And then at the end of one of your next exhales, we'll come all the way back through center. Let's keep, as we've moved a little into the hips, let's keep that movement coming down through the hips, keeping that external rotation. Left foot is reaching down, toes on the right foot of the ball of the foot lifting up, hand resting on the right knee on the inhale, we've got that external rotation. Inhale, keeping everything else stable, we're dropping the knee down and in. Now, depending on where you are on the chair and how long your bones are, you may want to shuffle forward to get a little more movement in that hip because this is what the movement is, of course, getting into that ball and socket joint. Everything else is stable and still as if your foot is in a ski boot. Um, if you don't need the hand to guide you, no big deal. But we want the fluidness of the movement and we want that left leg and our torso to be as still as possible so we really isolate and through always keeping that breath flowing, never holding the breath and just eking in a little bit more movement. Anytime we're pushing the body, it's just gonna contract. So we want to let the body open up in its own way, never forcing it. And being gentle with ourselves. So no judgment, just a curiosity. After the last exhale, we'll come back through center taking the foot down if it's lifted, making any adjustments you need to, coming to the other side. Right foot is rooted, left toes or ball of the foot is lifted on the inhale, take it wide, exhale, we're drawing it in. Right leg and your torso is as stable as possible, so we really isolate through the hip. And you can adjust this heel to be anywhere that feels really good for you. Gently does it longer, steadier, softer breaths. And after that last exhale, let's come back through center, readjusting that left foot down. Take a big breath in here and exhale it out. We're taking those 
feet back into center and then washing the knees side to side. Coming back through center. Re-establish the breath, check in with yourself, notice how you're doing. We're going into the last part of the class. So extending that right leg out. Toes spread really nice and wide, heel to the floor. And then curl that knee, um, curl that heel a little bit back towards you so you get a nice bend in that knee. And we'll take that right foot a little out to the side so we get that external rotation. Left foot is your foundation and we lift up through the torso. And from here, we're circling through the ankle. Keep that nice bend in the knee, and if you keep your hand on the femur bone, it's a long bone at the top of the leg, you'll notice this is turning too. So it's not just the ankle we're getting into here, we're getting into the knee. You're going to feel that flexing and extending a bit, but we're also getting into the hip joint, which we just lubricated. Now, point the toes and spread the toes in different areas of this. So we're getting into the bones and the joints of the foot as well. Let's pause and take that round in the opposite direction. The foot probably will travel as you circle, so bring it back to a comfortable, stable place for you. And again, we're just getting into the joints here. Nicely done. And then we're going to bring those toes back up, flick them back towards you, and bring that right heel more or less in front of that right hip. The further back you are on the chair, the more support you'll have, the more support under the thigh, the more forward you come, the less stable you are, but the more um, freedom you have in that right leg. Come back to the breath. Now this is the inhale as we extend. On the exhale, using that left leg for support, we're gonna either drag or tap back that right foot under the knee. Inhaling, extending, exhaling, bringing it back. Option to stay here. Option, as we come back, to tap down only the ball of the foot. And of course, this is increasing tension through the hip and the hip flexes. And we're taking more weight with the uh, quadricep here. Inhaling and exhaling. And this may already feel like a lot. And again, the more you push down into that left leg, the lighter this right leg seems to get. Option to stay here. Option to lift the foot up. Take the hands either side of the thigh, underneath the knee, or even in front of the shin. But we're lifting up through the crown of the head, so we're not rounding. Inhaling extension, and then either drawing it in, or simply lifting up through the heel, dragging or tapping that foot back. So you've got lots of bus stops here. If you want to add on, we're going to come into the spine. So on the inhale, as we extend, arching the back, we've already been here, let's take those arms out wide, nice and low towards the waistline, and drawing the shoulder blades back towards each other. This is the inhale. This is where you want to make sure that you have that stability on the chair. Exhale, maybe we tap the foot, the ball of the foot, maybe you draw in, or round and nose in towards me. Might not ever get there in this lifetime, no big deal. Inhaling extension through the spine. Exhaling, we've got the flexion of the spine. Notice how this feels in your body and then make it your own. Can you find a little more fluidity in the movement? And that is the smoothness that we're talking about, melding the breath with the movement. And if you're quickening the movement, because that feels easier with momentum, see if you can slow it down. And let's take two more here, unless you're resting. Mm -hmm. And then after that last exhale, we'll come back through center, take the hand on the right leg, and just wash the knee in and out a little bit, diffusing any tension, any tightness through the hip. 
Coming back through center, regulating the breath, longer, steadier, smoother breaths, and, or longer, steadier, softer breaths. I'm gonna take that left leg out now, slightly out towards the side, and then draw the heel back so that knee is nice and bent. Make sure you feel stable here. And then we're circling through the ankle, but of course it's not just in the ankle, but getting into the knee, the hip. In fact, if this is a whole leg workout all the way through the toes, because we're pointing and flexing the toes, moving in through the foot as well, trying to get into each of the joints. The more we move the joints, the more synovial fluid we have. That's the lubrication of the joint, so it's easier to move. And let's pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Adjusting anything, always giving yourself time and space to figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm, I've got some snap crack on pops in my ankle there. And then we bring the toes back out, flare the toes and draw that heel back in front of the left hip. Rooting to rise. This is the inhale. On the exhale, dragging or tapping that left foot back. Inhaling, extending. Exhaling, drawing back. Option to stay here, full foot on the floor, or ball of the foot, we lift through that left heel. And of course, then we're adding more pressure to the um, hip here, the hip flexes, and getting into working the quad a little more. Option to stay here, you know where we're going, keeping ourselves stable and still in the torso. Option to hover the foot, let the hands do a little bit of the work, but not so much that you're gritting your teeth and the shoulders are hunched. We want it, this is a harmonious relationship between the all parts of the body. Option on the inhale to extend the hands back or the shoulder blades towards each other, we've got this extension through the spine. On the exhale, curling it in, maybe the nose towards the knee. Now, what we like to do here is quicken it up. So let's see if we can move through molasses. Always knowing when you need to take a break, maybe you do every other movement instead of every one. Let the breath guide you, inhaling and exhaling. And let's take three more here if you're not resting already. Be gentle with yourself. Notice where you feel this. Curling it in on that last exhale. After that, we'll take the left leg down, hand to the left knee, and we just wash that in and out. Coming back through center, let's get into the back of the legs a little. So we've already been here, let's extend that right leg out. Heel comes down, and then we're pushing down into the left thigh here. So lifting up, and as you flex the ankle, flare the toes and draw the toes back towards you as you push through the heel. As you get here, for most of us, we're already feeling this through the back of the calf or the back of the legs there. Option to stay here. Now with a long spine hinging from the hips, not from the middle of the back, keeping the back nice and long as if we're reaching up towards the ceiling. This is the inhale on the exhale, hinging from the hips, rocking forward with the shoulders. Inhaling, shoulders over hips, exhaling, coming forward again, hinging from the hips, as opposed to grounding the back. When we do this, we get into the fascia of the back of the body. You can even tuck your chin a little, and that's gonna come from, actually from behind your eyebrows, all the way over the back of your body, down the back of your legs, all the way behind your toes, which is why we flare the toes and keep that tension. It's not gonna take very much to awaken the sensation in the back of the body. Option to stay here, option to come forward, three breaths here, belly's drawn in so we're not rounding the lower back and the collarbones are broad and wide, long through the crown of the head, and we're breathing longer, smoother, softer breaths. Relax the face, and on the last exhale, 
stay and then we'll push into the hands, draw the shoulders over the hips and bring that right leg back in. Coming to the left side, extending that left leg, same thing, other side here. So depending on how you're sitting on your chair, this side may feel very different to you, so be generous with yourself. Hands resting on that right thigh or another place that feels comfortable for you. And we're rooting to rise. We still have this length and breath through the torso. And we're breathing nice and steady and smooth. This is the inhale. On the exhale, with the toes wide and curled back towards you. We can rock the shoulders forward like you're sitting in a rocking chair, inhaling up. But we're hinging from the hips. That lower belly is drawn in so we're not rounding into the lower or mid back and the collarbones are broad. And this way, we're increasing that sensation in the back of the left leg. If you don't need that, then shoulders over hips, stay and breathe. Option to stay here. Option to come forward and stay for three breaths here. Belly is drawn in, collarbones broad, and we're breathing with a mindfulness at the back of the left leg. You may feel this in different areas through the sole of the foot. You may feel it anywhere. Make adjustments for you. Come out early if you need to. And then when you're ready, push into that right thigh to come up, shoulders over hips, and drawing that knee in. Just washing the knees side to side here. And then from here. We're going to bring our ankles and knees in towards each other. From here, we have a few options. Let's draw the knees and ankles in towards each other. And I have two blocks, yoga blocks handy, not expecting you to have blocks. This could be a stack of books rolled in a towel or anything else you have handy. And see where we're going first and see if you need it, you may not need it. We're getting down through that left leg. I'm gonna take that right knee out towards the side. Now we've got that Flex through the ankles, spread those right toes, and you can even draw the right foot in towards the left so you've got that connection. Making sure that you're back enough on your chair for support. Option to stay here if this feels enough in the hip. Now this is where the blocks come in handy. You can take those blocks in between the feet and then take the right foot on top of that block and then out towards the side. And this is going to increase the sensation through the right hip great place to stay. If either of those feel perfect for you, then we're going to stay here. If it's there for you, making sure that left ankle is under the left knee, maybe the ankle can fit on top of the left thigh. Flex through the ankle, spread through the toes as the previous modifications as well. Now, if you can get your foot up here, but you cannot breathe, please take it down to a more moderate height so it feels sustainable here. Whether you have your knee up or whatever level, this is the inhale. Hinging from the hips on the exhale, hands to knees coming forward. It's going to increase that sensation through the right hip and we inhale, shoulders over hips. Same thing here, only hand to knee and ankle. Very lightly, we're never pushing that knee down. This is the inhale on the exhale as we rock forward, belly drawn in, collarbones wide. We're increasing that sensation on that right hip and easing into the movement. Option to stay here, wherever you are. Option to come forward, breathe for three breaths. Let me keep that foot flexed here to protect the knee. It shortens the tendons and ligaments. honest with yourself. If there's more depth or you need to back off here, keep that breath as your guide. Let's stay for that last exhale. 
And we inhale, shoulders over hips, and releasing that right foot down. Same thing, other side here. So the first option, of course, is not to have the blocks and just take the left leg out to the side. This side may feel very different, so don't expect the same. Option to take that outer blade of the foot up a little higher, a little or a lot, or with that right knee over the ankle, maybe that left ankle sits on top of the right thigh. This may feel very different. I know it does in my body. Rooting to rise. And if this feels enough sensation just to sit here and breathe because it's quite intense in the hip, please stay. If you want to add on, this is the inhale, hinging from the hips, belly drawn in, collarbones wide. We're coming forward like a rocking chair, inhaling shoulders over hips. This is to ease into the movement. Only going as far as the breath allows you, never pushing past the breath or holding the breath. Option to come forward and stay. And we breathe, soften the jaw, relax through the shoulders. Keep that breath flowing steady and smooth. And more or less one more breath here, staying to that very last exhale whenever that is for you. And on an inhale, we're drawing up through center and releasing that leg down. One last twist here, bringing the ankles and knees in towards each other, either with or without a block. Let's take the right hand to the left side, left hand comes to wherever it's comfortable. We root to rise and twist. On the exhale, let's stay the three breaths, allowing ease in your body here. If your arms are doing much of the work, please hover them. Take the gaze back behind you if that feels good. Stay for that last exhale and the inhale back through center over to the left immediate, over to the right side immediately, sorry. Rooting to rise and exhaling, twisting. If the arms are holding you here, please relax through the jaw. And release after that last exhale, coming back through center. And then from here, all the work is done. We're gonna come back into the chair. Now, if there's a more comfortable place for you, very close by, a recliner, a couch, a bed, please take that if that feels more comfortable for you. Otherwise, we're coming back through the chair, making yourself as comfortable as you can as you sit back into that. Maybe turn the lights down, maybe put an extra layer on, take a sip of water, whatever feels good for you. And then when you're ready, we take a big breath in. Exhale it out nice and long. Let's take another couple of those big breath in. On that exhale, soften the gaze or close the eyes and let your body sink into the support of the Take another two breaths or so, for that to happen even more. Every exhale, sink a little deeper into the support you have underneath you. And then that last exhale, feel the relief of really allowing your bones to deepen and get heavy into the chair and the earth. Feel the chair underneath you and give your body permission to soften into it, almost like melting, like warm candle wax. And then taking your awareness to your inner body, your inner organs, and giving them permission to release. Allow the belly to get soft. Invite the joints to feel more spacious as the muscles relax and release and loosen. Relax the muscles of your face completely, parting your back teeth, maybe even disconnecting the tip of your tongue from the top of your mouth so it lies soft. Shoulders feeling heavy, body to sink into the chair underneath and behind you as you release the spine, 
the belly, the lower back. Relaxing through the hips and the pelvic floor. And allowing that soft relaxation, that letting go to roll through your legs to the tips of your toes. Through the wrists, the hands, the fingers and thumbs. And then we allow the mind to also relax. And imagine taking a mental step back from your thoughts as if you're simply watching them like a movie. Watching them coming and going. And every now and again, you'll get drawn into a thought and go off in one direction. When you notice that happening, just disconnect from it and come back to this place of simply watching the thoughts with a lightness and a curiosity. Huh, there it is, I'm thinking about that thing again. Hmm, now I'm thinking about that. Huh. Without any judgment. No, oh my gosh, I can't believe I, I'm going right back to that thing. I just stopped myself from doing that. That is judging. And it's like two layers of judgment there. So releasing that, just allowing yourself to be curious as you allow your body to sink deeper to the support beneath you. And notice as you let that happen, how it just keeps happening. We deepen and sink, breath by breath, moment by moment, down into the support underneath us, and how good that feels to really allow yourself to release. breath takes us deeper, and simply watching and observing the thoughts, and you can stay here for as long as you like. taking you deeper and enjoying this feeling of letting go. When we start to bring our awareness back to the support underneath us, the chair, the earth, and any other support you have here. Filling your body with your awareness from the crown head to the tips of your toes and fingertips. As we notice our whole body here, inside and out. Feel the aliveness in your body and the breath as it moves through your body and the body as it responds to the breath. And ebbing and flowing. Starting to invite a little deeper breath in when you ready to the top of your breath, and then exhale, soft sigh in your own way. And from there, stay for as long as you like, or allow that awakening breath to start to awaken your body in ways that feel good. Allow yourself intuitive movement to bring yourself up to a shape that you wish to finish up your practice today. Take your time and tune into yourself, noticing how it feels after an hour's practice. Re-establishing whatever shape you've chosen, and there's no wrong shape here, it doesn't have to look a particular way. Wherever we are, we settle into the support underneath us and lift through the heart space. Gestures that your hands wish to take, please take that. Maybe hands in the lap will give yourself a hug, hands over heart, any gesture that suits you. We'll take a big breath in right into the heart space. On the exhale, soften the gaze or close the eyes as we dip the chin downwards. 
take a moment here and notice, how am I doing in this moment? What's on my mind? How am I feeling? And how does my body feel? Notice the subtle shifts from the beginning of class to now. And thank yourself sincerely for being here, taking the time for yourself. From my heart to yours, namaste.